Good morning, folks. Sticking with our seismic uptick, Iran kept shaking, but the magnitude is unrepresentative of the full readings. These are the readings from the 5.8 we saw in USGS, quite a few in excess of that mark. It's not just earthquakes, but volcanic activity as well. The warnings are raised further in Iceland as alert level orange invokes worries of a repeat of 2010. We also have an unusual event in Indiana where tiny holes are appearing in sandy areas. They keep getting bigger though, and they're working to ascertain the cause. I'm a little bit more fixed on the fish die-off in Alaska. You know, long before the sea star wasting off the west coast, I was telling everyone I know about Fukushima. This is from 2011. Nobody was listening. Looking back at some of the early work on the animal effects reminds me of waking up. And hopefully this isn't another round of the same, but if so, the USGS who cooperated with us on that polar bear update video may be worth another ring. Earth's energy influx, gamma ray burst last night from the Serpens constellation. The solar flare x-ray and extreme ultraviolet energy was low. The spots are pretty much decaying all over the disk, and chances of bigger events are pretty minuscule. However, you'll remember the filament eruption facing Earth. You'll remember the halo eruption indicating an Earth-directed blast. The CME arrived about six hours late in the wee hours of last night with major density but virtually no enhanced speed or plasma temperature. Consider this an overweight, out-of-breath CME. Too early for geomagnetic effects, but auroras are likely tonight. We've also got eyes on the Rio meters, so nice to have a working set of these again. Coronal holes north and south won't be as effective as trans-equatorial openings, but they do have their influence and appear to have some significant power beginning around mid-latitude. Otherwise, it was a quiet day on our star. And speaking of solar quiet, professors and world experts are beginning to recognize the hand we've been dealt. The grand solar minimum, which we watch creep closer on the x-ray flux every day, is becoming more and more of a reality for those in the business. Every day we get a new professor saying so, or a new paper linking the sun to climate change, especially the effects of a grand minima, or demonstrating why the focus on only greenhouse gases has led the IPCC to fail at predicting global temperature variation for nearly 20 years. We see these on macro scales and at local level analyses. Quickly folks, Mobile Observatory has three events lined up in Montana this week. Check observatoryproject.com for details and for those waiting for the educational materials accompanying the Sun series, they will be ready this week at suspiciousobservers.org. We got two buoys in event mode near New Zealand. I'm almost certain that's due to the storm system there. Fairly massive, with the western storm slightly diminished, moderate alerts only. In the United States, we see major northern flows over the southwest and a north-midwest low drawing a strong south-swinging convergence line. That convergence will bring severe alerts throughout the Midwest today, and the flow out west heralds flash flooding for Arizona, Nevada, and Utah. Europe, a low in Greece and to the east, a low south of Italy, and the big one remains up north. That's where we find our storm watches tonight. We've got the rest of the world's thunderstorm warnings along with current global conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.35 a.m. Eastern Time, 4.35 a.m. Local Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.